NIV through the um, ventilator. It can be done on either a full face mask or a half face mask. The um, connection just needs to be changed to one of these blue connectors, which can be found um, in the respiratory cupboard in one of the top drawers. By the connectors, I mean this part here. So this bit will come off. Sort of twist by pushing these two levers here and it needs to be replaced with this blue one to make it compatible with the ventilator tubing. On the full face mask you'll need to remove this orange one and connect the blue there. The blue connector will then connect straight onto your ventilator tubing, there's no need for CO2 monitoring. Um, if it's connected it can interfere with your ventilation. Into the ventilator itself to set it onto NIV mode. You've got the main front screen here. Um, you'll just need to hit tube slash NIV and then you've got application mode, tube or NIV. So automatically the ventilator is set up for um, an ET tube or a trackie. Um, to make them for NIV you need to hit the NIV button, confirm it. Once you've got the NIV mode active, you'll see an orange um, box indicator at the top of the screen and an NIV and a mask in a patient's face at the top. It means it's then ready for um, NIV mode. Any other thing that you'll need to do? The other thing that you'll need to do is change your humidifier um, so that it's suitable for a face mask to stop the mask from steaming up. Um, and to do that, let's see, I'll turn it on. And you'll just need to press and hold this button here until the light is on the face mask and not on the ET tube. The ventilator always needs to be on a um, humid, warm humidified circuit and not a dry circuit. So you'll then need to set your ventilator settings. Um, this will obviously be dependent on what the doctor has um, prescribed for the patient. So if you hit ventilator settings um, and then just adjust as you normally would. The thing to be mindful with NIV is that the alarms need to be set to certain things and some things need to be switched off. So if we go to alarms, the minute volume needs to be switched off. Upper tidal volume needs to be switched off. The lower tidal volume needs to be switched off. The upper apnea time needs to be switched off. Minute volume delay needs to be set to 30 seconds. And the disconnect needs to be set to 30 seconds as well. So just to clarify, the lower minute volume needs to be off. Both upper and lower tidal volumes need to be off. The upper apnea time needs to be set to off. Uh, minute volume Delay needs to be set to 30 seconds and T dis disconnect needs to be set to 30 seconds also. All of these things need to be done so to help with the um, ventilation mode. If these settings aren't right, um, it can have an impact on the ease and the ventilation of the patient and it will cause this the ventilator to alarm continually. Any other thing to be mindful for? is your Tmax needs to be reduced to two. And then just increase it as your patient needs. It will take you back to the main screen again. Um, and this time for OptiFlow, obviously it has to be a warm humidified circuit to be using OptiFlow through the ventilator. Um, and the way that we get OptiFlow through the vent is on from this main front screen, you would then select O2 therapy and confirm it with the dial. You've got a warning up here which says use O2 mask for O2 therapy and not NIV mask. So you just connect your normal OptiFlow, either nasal cannula or tracky connection. You hit start ventilation. At the bottom here, you've got your liters per minute, which is the same as you've got on OptiFlow, except it only goes up to 50, whereas our OptiFlow obviously goes up to a literage of 60, and then your oxygen that you just tweak as you normally would. Other than that, that's all for OptiFlow.